Yellow, solar wind speed is pushing 600 kilometers per second, more than double what it was two days ago. The green temperature rises in kind, while the orange density falls with the speedier particles. This has coronal hole stream written all over it. We looked three days ago to find a dark coronal hole directly facing Earth. But finding the source is only half the battle. Here on Earth, our magnetic shield is holding form. We are taking some growing inductions, but the rhea meter was off for hours and we lack the plasma penetration data. This is of concern because both the ACE and GOES show charged particle anomalies here, both protons and electrons. Our planet's energy appears to be in flux. And with even more space weather set to strike this week, and Venus set to heliocentrically oppose Jupiter, while Mercury is swinging in for a geocentric solar conjunction, together these make our first significant quake watch of 2013. You can see some dark coronal holes. The leader is set to face Earth today nearly square on the equator. These coronal holes are a piece of the earthquake watch and early February appears to see a few pass our eye. But it's not just coronal holes coming in early February, the planets will play a role as well. While Mercury and Mars heliocentrically conjoin today, that is they line up as seen from the Sun. I'll flip this around and put Earth back there, zooming out, tilting. You can see Neptune down here and as I bring us forward into February, you can tell that Mercury and Mars will geocentrically conjoin Neptune and then, as seen from the Earth, they will conjoin each other. Got a full moon around that same time, conjoining all of them. Here are the planet positions through early March. That strong watch period to kick off February will coincide with those coronal holes I showed earlier. We should see our first uptick in six magnitude quakes or higher leading up to the new moon on the 10th, maybe a day or two afterwards. This is not a major watch, but with energetic flux, umbral change, unstable geomagnetic conditions, and the coronal hole position, let's call a minor quake watch for 48 hours. We are a few hours from the Neptune Solar Conjunction. If I turn off the atmosphere, we see them right there. One day forward shows the conjunction over. So with solar instability and a couple coronal holes on the disk, we'll combine those three for a minor quake watch. Remember the difference between minor and major watches. Red dominating the disk, and that's these dark coronal holes you see on GOES and the SDO. Not quite facing the Earth yet, but with the full moon hours away and four conjunctions set to follow in an eight-day span, we're calling our second major watch of 2013. Looks like today will finally be the day another coronal hole faces Earth. Even now you can see how the umber field has kept us from really getting a direct look at this opening in the solar atmosphere. story looking forward is the major quake watch set to begin when the umbral fields allow the magnetic opening in the solar atmosphere to face earth might be tonight might be tomorrow the coronal hole is coming and the planets start lining up right afterwards also got a plasma filament turning in ahead of that coronal hole we are looking for an uptick in six magnitude quakes or higher starting in the next few days eyes open no fear it's 6 30 a.m eastern time and that's the news Everything you need to track these things is cited with a link in the description box below this video, including this one, the USGS Earthquake Database Search. It is automatically set to search the globe, but you can specify an area if you want. As of time of access, it is 7.45 p.m. Eastern Time on March 27, 2013. We will look at just this year so far, and we are only interested in six magnitude quakes and higher. Your search results come up in a form like this. It will give you the date, time, location, magnitude, and other data points about the seismic events that match your search criteria. So I number the days of the year. 
spread the quakes out over the calendar for analysis, and assign these scores to the quakes. Multiple in one day are added with a maximum score of 10. I set the watch days from our daily news videos and arbitrarily made the number 5, it really doesn't matter, but the first and last days of the watch are tapered for a visual effect you'll see later. If you are truly inclined, you could pause the video multiple times and remake this chart, although I am going to do that for you as the days go by. It's one of the many topics covered in the daily news videos posted around 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time every day, right here with about 78,000 other suspicious observers. As time goes on, this list will grow long, but up to now we fit all 86 days on the first page. Let's isolate the seven earthquake watches we have had in 2013 and the time covered. You can see them spread across the timeline. 33 of the 86 days in 2013 so far have had watches for increased activity. We did the same here, isolating the largest earthquakes of 2013. That large spike was the Solomon Islands 8.0 and multiple aftershocks, and but for the score cap of 10, it would have been bigger. And this video would be somewhat useless without this, combining the two. Okay, I began the year missing a significant quake, a seven-pointer in Alaska, and as you can see, missed a few others. Now there are way more factors than the cosmic ones mentioned here, including air pressure, sea level, temperature, magma movement, wind direction, and just natural releases of pressure. But when you combine coronal holes, planetary aspects, and energetic flux from space weather, it begins to paint a picture.